guys. So today we're going to do kind of an educational bit, uh, which is why I have LC. Remember that uh, LC stands for Lunar Space Elevator Infrastructure. And what I want to do today, and actually really in the next couple weeks, is take some time to describe this process and what we're really trying to get to. Um, I don't want to talk down to anybody, but I don't know the level that you guys are starting from. So what I'm going to do is start with a pretty basic overview, and over the next couple of weeks we'll talk about construction today, usage, problems, opportunities. Really the next couple of weeks we're going to kind of dig into what this thing is and what it's for. Okay? All right. So thanks, Elsie. See you later. Okay, so when we talk about the construction process, there's a whole bunch of kind of really important moving parts. And just so everybody's on the same page, we think that the initial robotic system is probably, probably in the neighborhood of $800 million or so. So that seems like a lot of money, but in the scope of what we're trying to accomplish, it's a, it's a reasonable number. It's not too big, it's not too little. Uh, by comparison, the Seattle where we live, uh, it, has, it has four different billion dollar infrastructure projects. They're building a tunnel, a freeway, they're knocking down a bridge and they're building another bridge. Or sorry, they're knocking down and building a bridge and they're, uh, they're building a, a stadium. So yeah, $800 million sounds like a lot if you're thinking about it in perspective of, of your own checkbook. But in the scope of what we're trying to accomplish, I think it's pretty reasonable. So let's talk about the construction process. First, you're talking about the Earth. Pretty good sized. Then you're talking about the Moon. Now, obviously, this is not to scale. Uh, the Moon's smaller. And the, the Moon is somewhere in the neighborhood of 260,000 miles away. So it's, uh, it's pretty far out there. Um, and there's very, very little in between you there. Right at this level here, there's the uh, International Space Station and some of our smaller satellites. Right about here, let's call that uh, geosynchronous orbit. That's 22,000 miles up. Uh, that's where some other satellites are. There's GPS and stuff. But really, to kind of give you perspective, it's a long ways away. All right? Um, so, when we start the construction process, we're going to start probably from Florida. Okay, that's our baseline. We're an American company, so Florida kind of makes some sense for us. But there's actually lots of places we could launch from, and I want to stress that, that as this becomes an international project, our opportunities for where we launch could change. Um, the other thing being an American company, we've baselined as using American assets. But again, I want to stress there are about 14 nations with maybe as many as 30 rockets that have potential to at least use the system. I'm not sure if that's the right number for how many that could construct it. We baselined off of, off of five. Uh, the Atlas or Delta heavies, uh, the ATK Liberty rocket is pretty interesting to us. Uh, on the drawing board, you've got the SpaceX Dragon Heavy and also NASA's developing the Space Launch System. So five potential rockets, each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Um, the larger the rocket, the more capacity that we can use. So that drives a lot of our variables. But right now, those are the ones we're looking at. So what we would do is we would launch from Earth, circularize our orbit for a second, and then a bunch of things happen all at once. We have something called a solar electric propulsion engine. And so what that is, is you've got an engine here, and then you've got two very large solar panels as wings. Now, this kind of engine is very efficient, but it's very slow. So it's going to take maybe two, maybe three months to cross this void. And what it's trying to get to is the Lagrange point. The Lagrange point is the point in space 
where this is called L1. It's the point of space where the moon's gravity, which is weak, and the Earth's gravity, which is strong, balance each other out. Now notice, this is not the middle, right? It's not the middle because they're different sized masses. It's really biased towards the moon's side. This is only about uh, 55,000 kilometers from, from the moon, so it's, uh, it's not very far out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our solar electric propulsion engine and slowly move out towards the Lagrange point. And when we get here, a whole bunch of things happen all at once. One, we drop a string down to the lunar surface, a very thin, very strong thread down to the lunar surface. And at the end, it's got what we call a spike. And that spike slams into the lunar regolith and then pops out some barbs so that it can't get pulled back out. And that's really important. If this is an $800 million system, if you build that spike wrong, we have an $800 million mistake because that's the only thing holding it down to the moon. So we've got this string and we've got a countermass, the remains of the solar electric propulsion engine. But we've divided that solar electric propulsion engine into parts. So what we do, once this spike is in place, we take, take these three parts and push them back towards the Earth. And that becomes the counterweight that holds the string tight. So this is really what we're trying to get to. This string here is being held by Earth's gravity. So Earth's gravity is always trying to push the whole system down. And that holds this whole system tight. And that's really all we're talking about for the construction phase. Um, We've divided up the solar electric propulsion into two parts, dropped the string down, and pulled the rest of the string back towards the Earth. Now, this string is something in the neighborhood of 250,000 kilometers. It's about two-thirds the distance between the Earth and the Moon. So it's still a long ways away from the Moon, or from the Earth. There's a huge distance here, but, uh, but still a long ways away. Okay, so that's the initial construction process. It's not easy. I've certainly simplified a very complex problem, but that's where we're going. Okay, so we'll talk more about how we build this, what we're using it for, how people can get involved. We're going to look at uh, areas like law, international policy, engineering, military implications, social and political implications, all of those evolve or revolve around the concept of this lunar elevator. So that's what we're talking about. Thanks very much. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.